One time the Prophet وسلم, in some narration in Tabarani, Marra bi Arabian wa yadu fi salatihi. The Prophet وسلم, passed by a Bedouin man, and the Bedouin man was making dua in his prayer. And the Prophet وسلم, wa sami'a ilayhi. The Prophet وسلم, stopped and he started to listen. What does this man say in his prayer? And the man was heard saying the following words. He was talking to Allah. He was calling upon Allah. Listen to how he utilizes the entire world that surrounds him to get to the ultimate truth and reality of who is Allah and connecting with Allah and being able to recognize and realize the greatness of Allah. He says, Ya man la tarahul uyun. Oh, the one who eyes cannot behold in this world. Wala tu khali tu Minds cannot comprehend his greatness. Wala yasifuhul wasifun. People cannot praise him as he deserves to be praised. Wala tu ghayiruhul hawadith. That the events and the incidents that occur do not change him. He does not fear the passing and tribulation of time. He knows the exact weight of all the mountains in the world. He knows the exact volume of all the oceans in the world. He knows the exact number of drops of rain that fall from the sky. He knows the exact number of leaves on all the trees of the entire world. He knows the exact number and detail of everything. The day illuminates with its light and the night may hide in its darkness. One sky cannot shield or hide another sky from Allah. One ground, one layer of the earth cannot hide or shield another layer of earth from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The a mountain in its deepest, darkest cave cannot hide anything from Allah. And the ocean in its depths and darkness cannot hide anything from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how he sees and understands the world all around him. It, the, the narration goes on, the dua, he makes a dua. It's a beautiful, powerful dua. He says, Allahumma ja'al khayra umri akhirahu. Oh Allah, make the last part of my life the best part of my life. Say ameen. Wa khayra amali khawatimahu. Make the, my best action the last action that I do in this world. Say ameen. And make the best day of my life the day that I will return and come back to meet you. Say Ameen. So he makes this dua. And the Prophet appointed a man. He said, You stand here and you wait for him, and when he's done, you bring him to me. The man was brought to the Prophet. The Prophet said, What's your name? Where are you from? And he said, I'm from Banu Amir ibn Sa'asa. This was a tribe that was kind of considered like a cousin tribe of the Quraysh. They were related somewhat. So the Prophet ﷺ, he takes a gift and he gives it to him. The Prophet ﷺ had received a gift, he takes it and he gives it to him. Then realizing that he's a Bedouin man, he's a simple feller, he asks him, Atadri limada wahabtu laka? Do you even understand why I gave you this gift? Now look at the simplicity of this man. He says, Lirrahimi baynana. Maybe we're kind of like related. Maybe that's why. I don't know. And the Prophet says, Inna lirrahimi haqqun. He says, No, no. Relationships have their own rights. Walakin wahabtu laka li husni thana'ika ala Allah. I gave you this gift because of how beautifully you praise Allah. And how wonderfully you understand to interpret the world all around you as signs connecting you to Allah. But the reason why I mentioned the last part to observe the simplicity of this man, even a simple individual like this, who wasn't very educated, who didn't have you know, some sophistication of culture or society, still understood that this world that we live in is a means to drawing near and to recognizing our Lord, our Master Allah, and to building a connection to Him. Even amongst the ancient Arabs, right? They had this wisdom of how to look at the world around you. And so they mention, they say, there's many different things. One poet, he says, In each and every single thing, there is a sign that points you to and instructs you, points you to the fact that Allah is one and alone. In another uh, little 
just quote, a man came to a Bedouin who believed in Allah and says to him, you believe in Allah. You say there's one creator who made everything. For every claim, there needs to be proof. You can't just claim something without having proof. So what is your proof for believing in one creator? So the Bedouin man, he says, What do camel droppings tell you? That a camel was here. What do footprints in the sand tell you? Somebody walked by here. So he says, The earth full of trees, the ocean full of waves, the sky full of stars, doesn't that tell you that there is a creator who's made all this, this magnificent, breathtaking world that we live in? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course, in the Quran, says it better than any of us could ever try to articulate it. Sanurihim ayatida fil afaq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we will continue to show them, to display to them in the horizons. Sanurihim ayatina fil afaq, our signs. We will continue to open their eyes to our signs in the horizon. And the fil afaq, the scholars say, is not only just talking about distance or place, it's also talking about time. That as human beings move forward through time, and as they continue to travel through the world, and discover new places, and new times, and new eras, and new things in the world that they live in, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, we will continue we will continuously open their eyes to our signs. And they will always have a resource and a reference point to be able to connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in Surah Ghafir, ayah number 13, ayatihi. He is the one who shows you his signs. He is the one who sends down sustenance for you from the sky. The only one who will really understand the purpose and the point of the sign. The only one who will not be the fool, the idiot who pulls up and parks next to the sign and gets out and stands around celebrating the sign. But the only one who will make it on forward and make it, make it on to the actual goal and destination where the sign was pointing you in, where the sign was trying to direct you towards and take you to, is mayunib, is somebody who maintains an open mind and an open heart. And more than anything else in their life, what they want is a relationship with Allah. They want the truth. They want to find the truth. They want to understand. And even within themselves, they'll see signs. Until they finally come to understand and realize that it is the truth. What is the truth? It says it or he is the truth. Imam al-Razi ta'ala mentions that this could be referring to four different things. Number one, it is the truth, meaning that the Qur'an is the truth. This whole world that we live in is a way and a means for us to reflect and come back to the realization that the Qur'an is the ultimate truth. The second thing he said that this alludes to is الإسلام هو الحق, That Islam is the truth. This living a life of submission to Allah is the truth. The third thing that he mentions here that this can be referring to, the it, is that this is making reference to the fact that the realization that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving to that person in that moment, the spiritual experience that that person is going through at that particular time, that that is the truth. And the fourth and the final thing that he mentions that this could be referring to, that until that person comes to realize that he is the truth. And that he goes to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But that was the prime, one of the primary missions of the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To connect people to Allah using these powerful signs.